Well, as you guys can see, I am decked out in my winter work attire because old man winter is upon us. As you can see, we got some snow the other night and it is cold in here. Uh, I've already started getting my 500 winter ice. I got my windshield on. I got my rear windshield on. I have yet to put my doors on. I got a couple more upgrades to this guy. I want to get done here before winter gets too bad. Including what's in this box right here. Oh, not going to show you guys that yet though. But today, I'm going to finish my suspension transformation on my X4. And if I sound a little funny to you guys, that's because I got some retreads on my teeth. I got a Visaligners to try to get this crooked mess all straightened up. So if I sound a little lifty or a little whispery, then you just have to excuse that for a while because these are going to be in for a few months. So bear with me on that. But for you guys that might not know, and update you guys, I come to find out that the uh, Walker Evans shocks I had on my Pioneer 1000 bolted right in on the X4, at least the fronts. Now I did not show this on camera, but there was some complications when I tried to throw the rears on the other day. For one, the shock itself that was on the rear of the Pioneer 1000 is a little bit too long for the X4. And also the mounting bracket up here is a lot wider and so none of the bushings would fit so i contacted chris at walker evans showed him my findings and he was kind enough to hook me up with a new set of shocks for the rear which we're going to throw these guys on today and i know some of you guys are going to give me heck because it's a muddy mess in under here but it's like in the upper 30s i'm not going to play around in the water to wash this guy off so you'll have to forgive me this time so the first thing i'm going to do is get this rear end jacked up pull the tire off and get this old shock off Easy stuff. Here you can see the difference between the shocks we're working on developing for the X4 compared to the Walker to the Walker Evans for the 1000. As you can see, the 1000 is actually a remote reservoir, but with the X4, we're going to be able to get away with these piggybacks. So you won't have to worry about finding a location to mount this, where it's not going to be in the way. And I don't know how well you can tell, but the overall length of the shock itself is a little bit shorter for the X4. Like I said, these were just a little bit too long. So let's go ahead and throw this guy in there and we'll see if we can find the right bushings it gave me kind of a uh, hodgepodge of them here we'll see if we can find some that work all right so i already know that the thinner bushings from the 1000 will work here on the bottom so we already know that we're good to go there but the question is what will work for the top so let's go ahead and get the bottom ones in and this is the wrong side because i want my sticker that says hard and soft to be pointing the right way so i need to go grab the other one there now i'll be able to read my sticker and tell which way to turn Here's the bottom. Now let's see here. We got a couple different sizes here for the top. Let's see if these guys will work. Start us off. Oh, those I think are going to be the ticket. Yes, sir. That is easy enough. Oh boy, she looks pretty snazzy in there. Can't wait to dry her out. I'm going to get these tightened up. Hurry up and throw the other side on. 
and by then I might be out of daylight if I am we'll go for a quick spin tomorrow and give you my first impressions on how these Walker Evans are going to do in all four corners and how they transform the ride of the X4 all right guys so this is the next day by the time I got the other side on it was getting dark I knew the camera wouldn't pick anything up very well so I just went for a quick ride and I gotta tell you that completely transformed the X4 I knew the difference I felt in the front when I got rid of the load leveling and put the walker ribbons on the back is going to make this thing glide over everything and it does as you can see here both shocks tuck in under there nice we've got lots of clearance here for our piggybacks i mean we're not even close to hitting anything i ran it enough to fully flex the suspension last night and there's no clearance issues whatsoever there's the other side so now that we've got some daylight, I'm going to take the X4 here and run it through some of my typical tests real quick for you guys. We're going to hit the country, whoops, but where did that come from? And you know I can't go without taking this guy over the I believe I can fly jump, so let's see what this guy does with the Walker Evans. It's also that time of year to break out the good old winter riding helmet as well. And I'm going to do just like before, I'm going to hit this at slow speed around 10 miles an hour and then I'll hit it again around 20-25 miles an hour. I have the shock set right now at two clicks up from the softest setting, that's why I kind of what I played around with and found a good compromise last night. And I'm running 11 pounds of air in all my tires. Now I was hoping to be able to get the stock shock swap back in and reshoot these so you had a side-by-side -side comparison of the stock versus the Walker Evans to really be able to tell the difference because I know shocks like this it's a lot of money to drop if you're not sure of the improvement however we did get a big drop of snow before I got a chance to do that but come spring if we don't get weather before then I will do that for you guys so you can have that side-by-side -side comparison and we will revisit these tests so you can fully see the difference between the stock and the Walker Evans Now as was the case with both my Pioneers, it's kind of hard to be able to tell by looking at video how much of a difference aftermarket shocks make, especially at slower speeds, because you're not really stressing the shocks much and even the stock shocks, you're nowhere near pushing it to its limits when you're going slow like this. But once you start hitting that go pedal and pushing it closer to the floor, then you notice a big difference between the walker and the stock shocks. Watch the roof line here and it is my body as much as you can to see all the more that it's bouncing and all the more I'm bouncing. These Walker Evans do an excellent, excellent job at smoothing out the ride and absorbing these bumps so you hardly feel them. Alright, so I lied to you. That second pass was actually around 30 miles an hour and not 20 miles an hour. But uh, that's just a testimony to how well these shocks you work because I was going faster than what I was planning. Let's go hit the where did that come from. Now for those of you who might be new to my channel and are unfamiliar with these tests that I've done in the past, what the where did that come from test simulates is those unexpected bumps, those ditches, whatever it may be that you don't see when you're out riding and so you're not able to slow down or brace for them, you just hit them unexpectedly. And as you can see here, the Walker Evans do an excellent job at absorbing the impact again, especially here at the higher speed. You really can see how them shocks are absorbing and taking the bounce out of the machine itself. Alright, and since we are going to be jumping, I'm going to go ahead and turn these up three more clicks to put us at about five clicks up from the softest setting. That way we can be sure that uh, we're not bottoming out here as we come up over the jump. Which is one of the nice things about running the Walker Evans is you can fine tune the stiffness to suit the situation you're riding in.
or in this case to uh, suit the jumps you're hitting. Now as was with the case on both my Pioneers, it absolutely amazed me here at how well the Walker Evans handles catching some air. It just, they just soak up the impact and make it, the landing just buttery smooth. And yes, I know that not all of you have any intention of ever jumping your X4 or your X2s for that matter, but for those of us that do, Having a high quality aftermarket shock like Walker Evans really makes all the difference in the world. In fact, a couple guys shared how they have been jumping their X4s with the stock shocks and they have bent their front shock mounts. But the Walker Evans absorbs the impact so much better that I don't think I'll have to worry about that with them on there. Well, i tell you what, that's super impressive even considering how my jump is getting a little war on the one side and so I'm not landing nice and square and kind of landing forward and to the side a little bit and the Walker Evans as you would expect is absorbing the impact with no problems there's no bounce there's no harsh jolt as you hit so with the additional stiffness settings I could go up I bet you I could probably hit a lot bigger jumps than that if I wanted to now I don't want you guys to think that the Walker Evans are only made for high speed running and hitting big jumps they also do a fantastic job at smoothing out the ride for just regular trail riding. Whether you go slow, whether you go fast, you're hitting puddles, you're just trolling through the woods like in these videos. There is a major improvement in how the Wolverine will glide over stuff with the Walker Evans. Being able to dial it in to suit your riding needs is a big advantage and makes the Walker Evans suitable for machines that are seeing a lot of different kind of terrains. During these shots here, my trail riding, I had left the shocks up at five clicks from the softest settings, and that worked great for slow speed, and I was able just to hit the higher speed sections here without having to readjust, and it rode beautifully. So for my initial ride here, I put maybe 40, 50 miles on here with these Walker Evans shocks, and I am highly impressed with how they transformed the, the ride of the X4. And being that there are no other aftermarket shocks available for this guy yet, if you guys are looking to make your X4 ride a lot better, then these Walker Evans are going to be just what you're looking for. Now these are not yet available to the public, but make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook, and I'll make sure to keep you guys updated when these bad boys hit the market. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put some more miles on these guys. Enjoy the benefits thereof, and until next time, Keep on riding. Appalachian Mountain Riders is brought to you in part by the following. The Honda Side-by-Side -Side Club, because who knows the machines better than the owners that use them every day. Walker Evans Racing, when the path requires more than just ordinary, head on over to walkerevansracing.com. Torque Locker from Torque Masters Industries. When you want to explore the unexplored, head on over to torquemasters.com and by my gracious supporters on Patreon.